Hello viewers, this time it's a tutorial about the famous British made Western exposure meters. Now the earliest one I have is this one here, Mark II. This is from about 1953 when I got my first decent camera. The Master II used to be about £7 something. The selenium cell in which they all have is on the back here underneath this light gathering baffle. As it's a selenium cell there's no batteries required. It, it, it generates an electric current when the light hits it. So now the little needle has moved up and it goes to 6.5 which is on this scale here it goes from 0.2 to 50. This is the low light scale of lumens. If we had much stronger light, we close the baffle and now it goes from 25 lumens to 1,600 lumens. The um, Master 2 and Master 3, which I have down below, have a Western exposure system for the uh, sensitivity of the film, which is one third of a stop difference from the usual American Standard Association, the ASA. In the little window here, I've set it to 320 Western, which is the equivalent of 400 ASA. You change it by pushing down here, and you have to press down there and turn it. Well, as you turn it on this old one, all the paint over 60 years has been worn away. The Master 3 has a different scale and it doesn't have any paint anymore. It's got metal engraved so that it stays very good. It's still got the same selenium cell on the back and the same baffle and it's still got Western exposure scales. But this time the Master 3 has exposure value setting or EV settings for cameras which have a linked aperture and shutter speed value such as on some Rolly flexes and you can you can take a light reading and you can then set the instead of um, take a, say it goes to 13 here instead of reading off your apertures and your shutter speeds that you want to use here you can set on your camera exposure value of 12 as it is here then as you change the linked aperture and shutter speed, they will change together. But here, you, you've got any aperture and shutter speed combination, you've got to work it out yourself, what you want. Do you want a 30th f11, or do you want a 250th f4? They all give the same exposure, but of course the depth of field is different. And also the action stopping power is different. This is the Master 5. It's, again, it's got metal dials which don't wear off, but this time it has a lock on the side, and which is very good because if you are using the Invercone attachment, which I'll show you in a minute, you can lock it and you can get the reading what it says quite easily. Still got the same baffle. That's given me a reading on this one. They've changed it now to arbitrary numbers from lumens. That says um, 8.5, 8, between 8 and 9 there. But for 400 ASA reading there, it would give me, say, um, 30th F11, 60th F8, 250th F4. It agrees with the Master 5. The last in the line was the Euromaster. I don't know what the difference is except they put the price up. They put slightly different scales here, but it works exactly the same. And this time it goes from 10 to 16 here on the high scale. It goes from 2 to 10 on the low scale, the same as the Master 5. And the numbers are now only, of course, in the ASA. So they set to 400 there. And it's still got the German system here, Deutsche Industry Normal, the DIN system, 27 DIN, is 400 ASA. Now the beauty of the Western is you could use 
incident light readings. With the old one, you had to fit in a grey little adapter there, and the light goes into that white cell, and you point it to the light falling on your subject. So if you're doing a copy of a picture on a copy stand here, you point it to the light falling on your subject. The trouble with the old meters, there's no lock, so you can't see the deflection. I had to use to hold a mirror underneath to see the deflection. These are much better because they've got a lock now. You put in the newly designed Invercone, you measure the light falling on the subject, say on a copy stand here, you press the lock, let it go, and the measurement is here, 7.8 now. It's the same with the Euro Master. All meters are designed to measure light reflective in the subject and you have to take into account the tonal values. They are designed to integrate the light of a, of a grey scale such as the Kodak grey card here. If you are trying to measure something outside of that you will have to use your brain and interpret. Now we've measured the grey card here. It says a value of 8. Now if I measure the cloth down below it says 8 and a bit. We put the incident light measurement on and see what it says now. That says 8 and a fraction. It's very close because luckily the cloth isn't a bright white. If it was a bright white you would have to increase your exposure from when you're measuring snow for example. If you have to use a reflected meter reading you don't have an incident attachment. There is a means on the western to, to do it. If you're measuring snow and you get a huge reading say it goes to 16 on here which, 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 and it, you're going to a fairly slow film so to, to take it down a bit to 100 you get a read of say 16 of a white snow that would give you something really st stupid here which you'd never get 500th of a second F18 for 100 ASA that's totally wrong on the western you've got an O position here you turn the O opposite the reading that you've got and that will compensate for the whiteness of the snow by increasing the exposure. Now it says, says something like here we are, 250th F9 that's probably much better exposure 125th at 12.5 for a bit of white snow that is a means of, con of compensating for the whiteness of snow if you don't have an incident attachment. If you have an incident attachment like this you can point it at the light falling on the ground and it doesn't matter whether it's white snow or grey tarmac the light falling on the subject is measured and it will give you the correct readout straight away without any problems. Well this is a very quick demonstration hope I've explained a few things and try and follow me and I'll give you some more tutorials. Thank you for watching.